old now, so I can only wear them for like a couple hours. I hear a piano. Yeah, my mom's teaching. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> Mama Shreenan. Hi, everybody. Greetings. Um, Hi, Brent. That's fine. <laughs> Colton, the big pink C. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hi. Oh, man, how was, how was conference weekend this time? Would you guys... I found that it wasn't that much different from every other weekend from the last month, but how'd it go for you? It was good. Do we need to have a discussion on the church's new symbol and branding? Or will well, that take up the rest of the class? The chat was blown up. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I look at my phone and I had 119 messages. <laughs> People uh, asking you about it? It was just the our oh, class. It was just to be a fake group. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that chat. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I almost left. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to be with my people who understand. <laughs> when I first thought, I was like, oh no, but like I can't tell anyone about it without sounding like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have heard from Adrian throughout at various phases throughout this project, and I can say it could have been much worse. Oh, good. Yes, it could have been. <laughs> but you can say that with any project, right? It's true. Sometimes you're just trying to get out alive. Like, it's not about building something. You're, like, trying to get out of an Indiana Jones temple, and that's, like, a project. <laughs> trying to escape the giant boulder. <laughs> Very true. All right. Hey, did you know the semester's almost over? I don't know how I'm going to make it, honestly. Is it because it's the semester's over next week? Is it yeah. Wednesday or Thursday for you guys? It's Wednesday. Okay, so our... My last class is everybody's last class, Wednesday the 15th. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> nice, nice, dude. Looks good. Thanks, Brad. I'm down to Arizona. So playing outside, and I had to put my ponytail on. That's a requirement in Arizona. Um, I'm playing pickleball. Okay. Yeah, I found some found some pretty cool 3D stuff as I was happening upon. I don't know why. Oh, it's uh because of Feedly. Do you guys use aggregators to? Look at all of your news and stuff. Anyway, that, that's how I get a heads up on a lot of these movies that we watch. And I don't know if you've seen Horse yet. It's on Motionographer, but I thought that we should watch that together because it is, I think it could be inspiring for your information graphics projects. That made my whole week. I seriously had to look at the camera, like the videos, to see if Brent or Luke were making the sounds. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I would love to ride a horse that walked like that. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of personality there, and the animator also did the voice, so it's very very much an auteur piece. I would buy the pill off of that commercial. <laughs> Especially if the pill looks like that, right? I mean, what's going on there? Does it does it go back and forth like a hourglass? 
like an eight timer. I think what I like, <laughs> gosh, sure. Do you, this, are you old enough to remember Chewels, Luke? The gum that had like the juice in the middle from the 80s? I don't think so. No, no. It's Chewels. Oh, Gavin, you recognize that song from Artlist? <laughs> That's funny. Um, what I like about these spots is that it's a pretty, <clears throat> pretty good integration of footage and 3D, but it's the stuff that you see on, on Instagram. And if you follow like Octane people or 3D people, it's that, but it actually has a use now. Like I've, I thought that it was pretty appropriate for this particular ad. Usually you just see that stuff in a vacuum and it's like, oh, that's pretty, but especially these shapes right here. I mean, this is, this is great. This looks just like cosmetics. Zit Sticker, not a hip hop artist. But the capsule a, also looks like it's huge. Yeah, it looks like it would be hard to swallow, literally. They sell um, stars that you're supposed to stick on your face over your zits, too. Oh, is that why it's called that? I don't know. I thought that's what we were talking about. Zip sticker. <clears throat> I know that those exist, though. The star zit cover thing. Yeah. Isn't it bad for your skin to put stickers on it? I feel like if you're that embarrassed, you should just put a like a bag over your head. <laughs> that's mean. Um, let's watch another one because this one has some uh, additional cool shapes in it. Also by Zip Sticker. That one doesn't even say Zip Sticker. Art and Science is what the name of that one is. So an interesting thing about these recordings I'm making that I post on YouTube. Uh, most of them have been flagged for a copyright because I play these videos in them. So what I've taken to doing is just editing them out. So if you go back and you don't see some of the videos we watched, I apologize, but uh, it's because copyright law. Motion, motion. How would you say motion, motion in French, Luke? Because that's a French conference. <laughs> I start my mission where that conference is. Oh, really? Yeah. Just gonna write that in my journal. Super cool. Um, now that's a logo screen. Maybe it's because they're all French logos, but if you ever have to put a bunch of logos on a screen, you could do worse. And just sponsors logos. I. I liked the mix of hand-drawn and 3D. You don't see a whole lot of successful 3D times uh, hand-drawn. Oh, I just noticed this just now. Did you guys see this goo coming through the microphone? Cool. And the microphone itself is melting. Anywho, there's very much an aesthetic in 3D that a lot of people embrace, probably because it's fun to look at. But uh, it's good to be mindful of it, and then it's good to know how to work outside of that style as well. We have today, Wednesday, and next Monday, and the 15th. What should we have, we're gonna format this semester a little bit differently than I usually do, say, for example, my motion one class. I like to have you, I like to be completely done with the final pretty much on uh, the next to the last day of class, which would be next Monday. Um, and as you can see on Learning Suite, oops, let me get on the right class. Okay. So, oh, we don't have anything planned other than an old Varsity Theater food signups for Monday the 13th. But what you should plan on for your information graphics is just having a rough draft on the 13th uh, so that 
But what I really, really need to have on Wednesday is a finished product from all of you. And we're going to, like I think I mentioned before, I'm going to try to have them all collected and send them out to you. Uh, we're going to do a box. Is somebody, did somebody volunteer to make the box folder? Wait, next Wednesday or this Wednesday? Next Wednesday. Oh, okay. This Wednesday is the 8th. Did someone volunteer to make the box folder? I can do it. Okay. Thank you. We'll all put our stuff in there and then I want you all to download them. And we'll basically what we'll have to do is sort of synchronize our watching and then we'll uh, make our comments. What I don't want to have is everybody watching it at different times and be too distracted to give your classmates feedback. Um, if you're interested in doing speed critiques, we can certainly do that at some point, either on Wednesday or Monday. I mean, I would like to take a look at them on Monday as well, but I, I think we'll have time to do both. We'll have more than enough time to do speed critiques where you guys give each other peer-to-peer -peer critique. As well as Wait, so on them. Monday you want us to have a rough draft, like a rough cut of all of them? Yeah, Monday the 13th. Rough draft. Okay. Which means Wednesday you should have motion tests and you should certainly have, well, you don't really have stills. Are you guys storyboarding for this, hopefully? Are you sketching out storyboards? Digital storyboards become a little more difficult because you actually have to just make it in cinema, I guess. I guess we could say our storyboards are, you, you don't worry about render style. You're just generating, you're just rendering models at that point. That could be a rough draft. That could, you could do some motion tests without your final materials in. That would be good for Wednesday. But yeah, we are definitely running out of time. We're, we're two weeks left. Um, I think you should be able to get three loops done. Keep your expectations realistic and then execute them with excellence. And I think uh, you'll be all right. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Everybody's very silent today. I haven't done anything. Sounds good. Morgan, you haven't done what? I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Did you have a busy weekend? I'm, well, I'm trying to finish my capstone. Oh, those. Those I'm don't take boat. any time. Right, it was a conference. Oh, I'm like geez, building yeah. a website. Tell me about it. Six hours on Saturday. I didn't get any work done either. Um, okay. Well... Yeah, um, there is some degree of, well, let's talk, Morgan and Dom, you already reached out via email. Uh, Brenna, what's what's the status there with your capstone? I'm done, pretty much. Fantastic. I just am setting up on next Tuesday, and then I'm going to upload them online. Okay, that's right. Okay, well, what do you feel would be helpful? Obviously, we're going to break into individual appointments because I want to see what the status is of your information graphics. Um, if you have any, some of you may have residual product, uh, sorry, packaging design things you want me to look at, but uh, or Luke or I to look at. But we should really be going full speed on information graphics at this point. You will have a week after the 15th, if you, you know, obviously if you turn stuff in on time, you'll have another seven days in this case, this semester, to turn in anything that you need to turn in from earlier in the semester that you want either a better grade on, or that you have time to polish, or what have you. Okay, do you have any other questions about information graphics? Uh, I have a question about just everything. Are we still making like a 
a reel, a highlight reel? And is that due yeah. on the 15th or the 22nd? Take a look at Learning Suite. It is due on the 22nd of April. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Yes. Don't forget about Learning Suite, everybody. I know it's easy to once out of sight, out of mind. I don't know if you guys, if you're on campus, maybe that was more of a prompt to look at Learning Suite, but it's still there. Even though it's having tons of tech problems, it wasn't even working earlier, earlier today. But uh, yeah, I'm still trying to update that fairly regularly. And I put up a new Instagram channel, Render Fruit. I try to, whenever I find uh, woman motion designers or woman 3D motion designers, I will link you to them because they're so few and far between, but pretty talented uh, render fruit Instagram that I added. For some reason, on Monday the 13th, I must have added that before. Okay, is there anything that you feel like we should learn as a group before we break into individual appointments? I didn't have a whole lot to present today. Uh, Luke, did you have anything that you wanted to talk to the people about before we break into individual appointments? I just wanted to see your bright, smiling faces. Oh, Dom had a question. Oh, and Brenna raised her hand before, too. I need Let's Ben see. to respond to me in the chat. <laughs> okay. You're Ben's net ID. I'm adding everyone to the box folder right now. Oh, fantastic. I'm stressed. You're yeah, same. <laughs> How can we help with that? Um, now, have is, you been? <laughs> What's that, Brenna? I think the motion reel is stressful. Edit, sorry. Well, the good thing about that is you've already done the work. You just need to edit it together. That's stressful. How can I, how can I make that less stressful? What if we send all our work to you and you make them? <laughs> I'm going to politely kidding. decline your offer, <laughs> Dom, to no. do your work. Sorry. I'm just kidding. Artlist.io is a uh, royalty-free music website, Deb. Not free, unfortunately. You guys ever do the one hour challenge where you're like, all right, I'm going to try to do this whole project in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's actually really helpful because you get really far and then usually like, but after you do the one hour challenge, you, um, usually you can see like the end of your project, like it forces you to prioritize really fast. And so usually like after it, you can sort of be like, oh, I know exactly how what I need to do now and how long it's going to take me. At least a lot more. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a strategy I do when I'm just like, well, I have 50 things to do and I can do 10. So. Yes, a design sprint, if you will forgive the modern corporate buzzword, sometimes helps you yeah. get over those hurdles. If I can okay. use another track metaphor. Dom, yes. I have two questions. One, can you send that horse video to all of us or just me? Because I want it. Yes, I'm only going to send it to you. Um, and then the second question is, you know that egg McMuffin loops that you sent us a couple, or that you showed us a couple months ago? I don't know when that was. Yes. We um, should watch that again. That was perfect for what we're doing now. Yeah, it really is perfect. But did they just use Cinema 4D, or was that on a different uh, Cinema and probably Octane. Because like my question is, I don't like the part of the egg falls down and it rolls on that like curve and then it comes back up. And I'm just wondering how you get something to follow that line so nicely. Does that make sense? Should we watch it again? Mm -hmm. That's the director's cut, by the way. That's That's why it's so beautiful. <laughs> you should do like a little tutorial so we can like learn some of the technique in it. I didn't make this. I don't know how, what all the techniques are. I can guess. I don't so, know. Just maybe like 
how you control stuff to move a certain way, I don't know. Well, anything that is choreographed perfectly is is keyframed very um has it been given a lot of handcrafted keyframing like nothing here is it, it might look like some of this is dynamic some of this is falling like these are just falling right here by the way this material is fantastic but uh yeah everything else you see here like things moving in tracks has been very carefully calculated and planned out ahead of time and is keyframed Oh, I have a random question. If you go back to the eggs, like that going down that little tube, it looks like it was in normal camera, but then it looks like it turned into isometric or something. Mm -hmm. How do yeah, they do that? That's just changing the length of your lens. That is an oh. easy change to make. Yeah, the perfect isometric angles are just the results of like an super long lens essentially and you know i have i wondered if there was such thing as an isometric lens in real life there is mm -hmm. they're for like engineers though you can't really put them on your canon rebel um what are they called but yeah it's just a matter of lengthening the lens it's pretty easy to do like if you use the what's the longest preset in cinema is it like 300 is it 700 but if you just make it super long, uh, you, you can get pretty much uh, isometric. Or you can choose isometric. There's an actual setting called isometric. So do you think this egg is um, a stimulation? Because it's like a soft body. This one, yes. I do. Now, what I don't know is if they did it all at once. It seems fairly random, so it conceivably, yeah, this one's random enough that I think it could be all simulation. The yolks are soft bodies. So and how then, do you, like, make the yolk, like, go down the stairs with stimulation? Well, in any dynamic simulation, you can apply a, a force at the very beginning, or you can apply a constant force, like a wind, essentially. You can have a move forward down the stairs. There's an initial force, and then there's. Let's open up uh, cinema. Do you think they're being shot out of an egg emitter? <laughs> Possibly, but I think an emitter, unless the speed was set really slow. Yeah, it, it could very well be a yolk emitter, Bram. So what's the difference between like a octane render and a redshift render? Well, the main difference is that one is biased and the other one is unbiased. And what that means is that octane being unbiased doesn't take any software or hardware shortcuts to achieve realism and real ray tracing light. That's why it's so easy to get really realistic photo real stuff um, in Octane. Redshift, it takes a little bit more work because it takes shortcuts. It's sort of like the way, you know, the way that an image is made small as a JPEG is through, is through algorithms and stuff to make it small. And those algorithms uh, happen to be just condensing a bunch of color blocks into a, a small square. That's why you get JPEG artifacting. Um, Redshift achieves realism through I don't know if it's strictly direct lighting. Does, do you know, Luke? Does who knows about Redshift's technology? I don't, I, I don't know if it. I don't know. I think they also use path tracing. I just know that since it is biased, which means that there are some software shortcuts in there, it goes super fast. Like it's faster than Octane, but it's not as easy to get realism as quick. And also, it only runs on Windows right now, whereas Octane will run on a Mac if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. But uh, it might be, and I know it's a little harder to pick up. Redshift is a little more hardcore. It's like Arnold. Uh, pros tend to like Redshift because it's so it's got so many options. Um, but yeah, it's it's sort of like 
50-50. These days, a lot of people are moving to Redshift just because of the sheer speed, and it also works great in the production pipeline. But I found that for learning how to use GPU renderers, Octane is a better starting place. Maxon owns Redshift now, and I don't know if it's ever going to be integrated into the actual program itself. But if it does, you'd be wise to pick it up. Cool, I was just wondering, because I saw a lot of tutorial on Redshift. Yeah, there's more and more. Grayscale Gorilla guys, they are all about Redshift. I've only opened it like once, and I was like, this seems hard and very similar to Octane, so I'm gonna stick with Octane. Let's see, I was going to show you what happens in a dynamic simulation to get forces. Am I, I didn't, I'm not sharing yet, am I? Let's do the classic bouncing sphere. Do I dare do a impromptu soft body demo? Soft body dynamics are notoriously tricky. The more polygons you have, the worse your life is with soft body dynamics. Oh, us. <laughs> soft body, let's make this plane into collider. Let's see if we can decrease even this many. I'll do 12, yeah. Hey, look, it's a little bouncy ball. I posted on Learning Suite, there's sort of a visual, actually it's animated, isn't it? On, let me just tell you what date it's on. Soft body reference. Soft body dynamic examples. Way back on March 2nd, there are some quick time movies. Let me just make sure the YouTube's still good. Yep, the link looked like it still works. So on March 2nd, there's a couple links to some YouTube videos that show you what some of the different settings in soft body dynamics do. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is how to get forces on this soft body sphere. I'm going to put you guys over here. And let's make our ball a little bit higher so it can bounce better. <laughs> See how it just sort of drops like a hacky sack. There's a little bit, it just doesn't bounce at all. Let's take care of some of these. Let's increase the bounce, decrease friction. Let's see what that does for us. I'm also gonna give myself some more frames. is happening here. Okay, I'm going to add a few more. So soft body, super tricky to get right on first try. Let's give ourselves more. So see how it's going below? Oh, that's better. That's a lot better. And the reason it works better is because I added more polygons. There is, this might be going a little bit too far ahead, but if I go to my dynamics settings, my general product uh, project settings, sorry, where's project settings? Command D, uh, control D. Anyway, uh, over here in the dynamics tag of project settings, we can, there are a couple things you can do if your dynamics aren't working 
like if a ball is going below a surface it's supposed to be colliding with, you can change uh, the steps per frame and this maximum solver iterations per step. This is basically the quality of your simulation. The, the higher these numbers, the slower it renders and the more processor intensive it becomes. But I have had to change these things before, like change five to 15 and maximum solver to 20 or 25. Just if your simulation is not behaving the way it should, keep in mind that there is a dynamics tab and under the expert sub tab, you can change steps per frame and uh, maximum iterations per step. That does tend to help. But if, you can, if your computer's already struggling with physics and dynamics, you might want to go easy on those numbers. Uh, Morgan, to answer your question, the signups, I haven't changed the signups at all. They're still from last week. I think we'll be able to start earlier today. And Brenna put the link to the Oh, is that for uh, today's appointments, Brenna? Oh, hey, look at that, 250. Are you guys filling it out for today? Yeah, I just put it in and erased everything from last week. Hope that was okay. okay. That works. That works. It's a public document. All right, what was I going to show you? Oh, yeah, forces. So we have a bouncing jello ball. I don't love how it's so floppy right now. See how the, the top sort of caves in a little bit. I'm going to change the pressure settings. Uh, let's see, here's soft body. We need the soft body tag. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure in here and a little bit of volume conservation to just keep the original shape of the ball. There we go. Now it doesn't cave in so much. Wait, where'd you do the volume thing? The uh, pressure and volume is under the soft body tag of our dynamics tag on our sphere. What does the pressure do? It actually fills it up. It's as if it were a helium balloon and you were filling it up with gas. If I do it a lot, you can see, you might be able to see that it sort of pops at the beginning. Let me see if, yeah, see how it gets bigger? It actually increases in size as if it's being filled up with air. Cool. It doesn't work very well on type, just to let you On know. type. Type is super tricky to get a good mesh. You have to have like a really clean quad mesh. Yeah, type is tricky. Uh, so that's better. Uh, we could stiffness, volume, damping. If you turn down damping, things tend to get more lively. Damping, shape conservation, damping. Let's take those all down to 10. Boom. See, that's fun. Now it's starting to bounce more. And what I was, what the whole reason I started this demo, uh, Ben, is to show you that you can custom initial velocity, initial linear velocity uh, on the x axis. Let's just try 20 centimeters. Wait, is that the right axis? Yeah, that should, that should be right. There we go. So let's try 100. 100 centimeters of velocity at the beginning is going to kick my ball a little bit. And see, it's, it's a little bit tougher to roll because it's soft body. But with uh, just rigid body dynamics, generally this initial velocity has more effect and it'll roll right off the platform here. It looks like so I'm if starting you, to... If you have a soft body, do you just make the velocity like bigger? Yes. That's what I'm discovering. And I'm also going to add more polygons here. Yeah, see, it's 
this is what happens with soft body, this sort of thing. <laughs> and that's interesting that that only happened when I upped the linear velocity. So let me take that back down to zero. But don't your plane is already like a rigid body, so it won't like go through it? Yeah, that's, that's what's supposed to happen. So it looks like, I wonder why it's doing that now. It wasn't doing that before. But this would be a good chance for me to go into project settings, control D, into dynamics. And let's see if bumping up the steps per frame and the solver iterations helps. Yep, see that fixed it. See how it moves a little bit slower, but it fixed my problems. Okay, so there is, you can bake what's called you know how you bake a shape, you make it editable? You can bake your dynamics in Cinema 4D. If your computer is just brought to its knees, if it's just crawling along, you can do what's called bake your dynamics. Uh, it's actually, the proper word is cache your dynamics. Um, but I can save all these frames. Like if I say, bake all, it's going to save all those frames in memory. And then every time I preview in my viewport, I won't have to wait for my computer to struggle. And, and the other thing is I can actually drag my uh, timeline placeholder. Okay, so it, it actually, it's just saved, saving it in memory, which um, I have found that it's a lot easier to render. Things are much more predictable if you cache, if you bake, your dynamics animations before you hit render. So you can see that moves a lot better now. And how it doesn't go through the bottom. Go ahead. How did they get it to fall down the stairs? Well, that was... Oh, that was the wind you said, the force that you could do? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Never mind, sorry. No worries. This is a time for questions, Dom. Let's see, Luke, do you know, I can, I can probably use a fan, can't I? I can use wind. Yeah. Oops. If your friction on the plane and the ball is like really close really to low. The <laughs> Where did you find a fan? It's under simulate. This is for particles, but I, I'm surprised at how many things that these uh, attractors and fans work with. Let's just see if this does anything. Doesn't seem to be affecting it at all. <laughs> Probably because it's not moving very quickly. One trick, which is kind of ghetto, but <laughs> I'll like put the I'll put the camera and the plane and. Well, I guess you can either just like tilt the entire thing, but the camera's tilted too, so it looks flat. Or um, mm -hmm. you can change the gravity for the whole scene yeah. if you don't care if your whole scene is changed. Yes. Those are both kind of workarounds. <laughs> no, I, I thought these forces worked with dynamics. This one doesn't appear to be affecting it at all. I, th I think they do too. I've used the fan on like cloth and stuff. Yeah, maybe we just have to up our strength. Wind speed, 250. There we go. Still not, still not even touching it. What about 2,000? Mm. You would start feeling the fan from your computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that's not working, you... but let's go. Is the fan, is the ball too big? Like, is it too heavy? Is that dumb? <laughs> no, it's not dumb. It, I mean, it's, it's working with real world math and physics. So you might be onto something, Dom. What I'm going to do is go back into our collision, our dynamics. Oh, that's interesting. Custom initial linear velocity is now grayed out. Could you try making the fan bigger? Because oh, it's cached. Um, that, that doesn't, this is just a, a representation. Uh -oh. The scale of it isn't as important. It's really just the, uh, the speed. Let's see if we can bump up turbulence, although that's not gonna, turbulence frequency. 
Man, yeah, it's just not even touching it at all. So did you notice how when I went back to my settings, I can't change the initial velocity because it's cached. So I need to go over to my cache tab and I'm going to clear my cache. And now I can go back and change those settings. Initial angular velocity. Hopefully everything doesn't explode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a little much. Clay, did it work? I was looking up some. Oh, you know why? You know why the fan wasn't affecting it at all? Because it was cached. I oh, needed to clear the cache. Sorry. Um, I need to take the wind speed down. I don't need that much wind speed. I can probably go back down to 100. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Because, it, yeah, it's, it looks like it should have been working. So. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so it totally worked. I was just dealing with cached animation. Don't be like the teacher and forget that you have cached animation and get frustrated. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of all initial velocity. I don't need it. We can just deal with our wind here. Take the wind speed down to like 30. And there we go. There, whoa. Sweet. Wait, so cool. did you lower the um, friction or stuff like that? I did. I took the friction down on the sphere and the plane. I think Luke was onto something with that. Yeah, 20%. Cool. And 20%. And then I just bumped down the wind speed. Look at that. That's exactly what we need for our egg yolks. We can make our own. You can. You can make your own McMuffin cut. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> Soft body dynamics. Okay, I think it's time to move to individual appointments, isn't it? Or we could just move it back 10 minutes. We could move everybody back and keep going if you want. Um, Deb, Bram, and Beth, did you sign up today? Or those are those are old signups? Yeah, I, I said, signed up today. Yeah, me too. Okay, cool. Wait, like it's starting at 310? Uh, I don't care what time. I'm available whenever. Okay, thanks guys. Just checking. Hey, All right, see you guys. What sign, up, what sign up is Luke talking about? Yeah. It's different than Radio the one. Sheet. Oh, no, there they are. Deb, Bram, and Beth. 310, 320. JK, they just showed up. <laughs> oh, I actually it, deleted them because I thought they were old, and then I realized they probably weren't, and so I put them back in my. Gotcha. You're not crazy. Come here. Do you want to show my class what you just got? In, Wait, uh, the mail? Oh, sorry, I'm sharing. You want to come say hi? Oh, he just left. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Um, That's a little. I shared the motion folder for the final from Box. Thank you for doing that, Brenna. So it should have been, if you just log into box.uau.edu, it should show up in your files. Cool. Um, can I, not, then, yep. everybody on my list back 10 minutes? That's fine with me. Because I think we're going to, yeah, I think three o'clock is more realistic. Okay, so caching dynamics. I think we've all learned a little lesson today, myself included. And soft body, the more polygons, the more realistic, but the more polygons, the, the more trouble your computer will have actually executing it because it's super processor intensive. Uh, who was that, Morgan? Were you the one that did the proxy low poly cage for soft body objects? Yeah. There's a fantastic tutorial on the Grayscale Gorilla that shows you how to use a low poly 
proxy cage if you have like a complex model that you want to apply soft body dynamics to but it's got too many polygons you can make a low polygon cage that you then map to it you basically tie them together it's really easy yeah it's pretty straightforward so that might actually be on learning suite also Maybe not. It seems like I looked for it before, Morgan, and it wasn't there. Okay, anything else you want to go over before in the three or four remaining minutes? I will post today's demo on YouTube. I'll probably have to cut out the videos, though. It'll Otherwise, it'll get flagged for copyright. Okay, mm -hmm. Luke. How are things going at your place? Good. I just did my final Costco run for the foreseeable future. I had like a mask and gloves and it was like, like pretty intense. Why, why for the foreseeable future? Because you just don't want to go back as often as you used to? Yes. Okay. Not because you're like leaving to go to a remote island? Not a bad idea. But <laughs> <laughs> did no. you guys... <laughs> Go ahead. Right, go ahead, Luke. I was just going to say my brother and I agreed on a lockdown for the two weeks, like nothing. Nobody yeah. comes in, nobody comes out. So. Yep. Did you happen to anybody see the news story about the couple that was honeymooning down in the Maldives that are stranded and stuck like they can't leave the Maldives? Is that the one <laughs> that's like in the five-star hotel? <laughs> yes. It's like 750 bucks a night and all the servants are there. All the hotel employees are just serving two people and everyone's stuck. Did you guys yeah. hear what the tigers at the Bronx Zoo who got coronavirus? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. What? Of tigers course it's in the Bronx. <laughs> tigers can get the corona. I did not know. Wait, are you so holding up, Brad? Oh, good. Things got a little tenuous. You know, late Sunday night on conference weekend, you've been cooped up in the house too long and add that to three to four weeks of quarantine. I was ready, ready to do something different. Yeah. But we're good. We're hanging in there. It's good to see people, even if it's just on a screen. Um, well, good. Stay. Stay safe, stay strong, stay out of Costco as much as possible. I went to the store on Saturday and I saw many people wearing masks. So I think the message is sinking in, even in Cowboy Springville. So you might be okay. All right, let's, uh, let's break up into individuals. Luke, you're sending out an invite, right, for your meeting room? Yep. Okay. Morgan has one. Her neighbor Morgan has a mask. <laughs> my mother-in-law made me one too. My mom wrote my name on it. Oh, what? Lucky. <laughs> Hi. Okay, bye. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. We'll bye. See you guys. I'll send out an email. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Luke. Bye-bye. Thanks, Matt.